Hello guys, my name is Nicholas. Welcome to my channel. A bit about myself, I'm currently a junior doctor working in the UK. I do have a master's in public health and also a PG cert in medical education. Now, over the past few weeks, families and friends have been coming to me asking me more about monkeypox. Now, I felt that there's a lot of information out there in the public that's released on a day-to-day -day basis and information can be very, very easily misinterpreted. So I decided to do some research on my own to try and figure out what's been going on to give you guys up-to-date information in the situation that we're currently in. Right, so to start off, monkeypox is a viral zoonosis, as you can see here. Basically, what it means that it's normally transmitted from humans to animals. It's part of the orthopox virus family, which also includes smallpox. Now, the first time which monkeypox was discovered, it was in 1958, and these was in a group of monkeys that were kept for research and thus where the, uh, the, the name came from, monkeypox. But there are also other animals that harbor the virus, such as rats, squirrels, and also rodents. Now, monkeypox has been slowly emerging over the past few years since the eradication of smallpox back in the 1980s. And a very, very, very small explanation for this is because we have ceased to administer the smallpox vaccine. This is because smallpox and monkeypox are from the same family. So vaccination from smallpox would also provide some sort of immunity against mon monkeypox, which we will be talking about later. Now, the first case of monkeypox was first found out in 1970 in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And ever since then, monkeypox have been reported in other Central and Western African countries. So there are two different strains of monkeypox, one of which originates from Central Africa, which is where the Democratic Republic of Congo is, and the other which is more commonly found in the West of Africa. This is really important because these two strains actually carry different mortality rates with the West African strain carrying a mortality rate about 1-3% to and the Central African strain about 10%. Now, the most important insight that we have gained so far is that most of the infections in the UK um, after testing and all resembles closely of the West African strain which is a less severe strain between the two. The first time monkeypox was actually transmitted out of Africa was an outbreak back in the US in 2003. This was due to the importation of infected Gambian rats, squirrels and also dormice which were housed in close contact with prairie dogs which are actually not dogs but a type of squirrel as you can see here which were later sold as, sold as pets. Fortunately, there were no reported deaths during the outbreak. But ever since then, the virus was then transmitted to other countries such as Singapore, which I was from, and also the United Kingdom over the past few years. All of these sources tend to trace back to Nigeria, including the current outbreak that we are getting in the UK. So looking at the UK Health Security Agency website, the most updated information was on Friday 27 of May. There are currently about 106 cases in the United Kingdom. The agency has also said that they have actually purchased over 20,000 doses of smallpox vaccination called Invanex. And this is currently being offered to close contacts of those who are actually diagnosed with monkeypox to try and reduce the, uh, the symptoms of the infection and also possibly the severity of illnesses. Right, so how does monkeypox spread? There's actually two ways we can think about this, human to human transmission and also animal to human transmission. In terms of human to human transmission, the CDC states that you know the transmission is thought mostly to occur through large respiratory droplets. I'm not sure what large respiratory droplets mean, could it be like sneezing or coughing, but the CDC has also stated that these droplets cannot travel more than a few feet. So prolonged face to face contact is normally required to spread the disease. This actually puts healthcare workers like me, household members and also close contacts of those who are infected at a greater risk of transmission. Other ways that the virus can actually could spread from human to human includes contact with bodily fluids, sores or infected materials such as infected clothing or linen. If we talk about animal to human transmission, it's similar in a sense whereby contact with bodily fluids or infected materials such as animal bedding could transmit the virus, but there are also other factors such as getting bitten or being scratched by an infected animal or actually eating an adequately cooked and inadequately cooked, my apologies, from an infected animal. 
So, is monkeypox actually a sexually transmitted disease? You know, it's very, very easy to misinterpret the information that's out in public, right? If you take the WHO's definition of STIs, STIs are normally spread predominantly by unprotected sexual contact. Now, the majority of cases identified up to date have been among men who are gay, bisexual, and men who have sex with men. However, just because a certain group is found out to have the disease doesn't automatically make monkeypox fall under the category of sexually transmitted disease if you take the WHO definition into consideration. And yes, you know, someone can argue that monkeypox is an SCI because one of its many modes of transmission is through contact of bodily fluids. But in this point in time, it doesn't really fit the criteria of a sexually transmitted infection, especially when there are other modes of transmission, including animal to human transmission. The BBC has actually posted a really good article on the potential stigma that monkeypox can actually give in certain communities. We are not really sure why monkeypox has a higher incidence in people in these communities, but guys, Guys, I urge you, please do not put a label or stigmatize them because monkeypox can infect just about anyone. The risk of stigmatization in society is stopping those people from seeking help when they actually need it. So how contagious is monkeypox? Some of you might be thinking, is this going to be the next COVID? Now it's very hard to say because we're still in the early stages of figuring out what's been going on. However, a good number to look at is the R0 value. The R0 value, also known as the uh, basic reproductive number, in simple terms, basically describes how many people each infected person would transmit the virus on average. To give a rough comparison, back when COVID first came out, the CDC published a paper estimating the R0 in China and turns out to be about an R0 of 5.7. Now, the bulletin in WHO also posted an article back in 2020 theoretically trying to predict the R0 value for monkeypox using data collected in Africa, and it turns out to be 2.13. So just by looking at the numbers, monkeypox could potentially be less infectious than COVID-19, but who knows, time will actually tell. So what are the signs and symptoms of monkeypox? The incubation period of monkeypox is thought to be about 7 to 14 days, but it can actually range up to 5 to 21 days. Incubation period being basically the time from infection to the infected individual starting to show some symptoms. Now, monkeypox generally start off with general symptoms such as fever, headache, muscle aches, a bit of fatigue, and exhaustion. So the main difference between monkeypox and smallpox is that it was observed that monkeypox causes lymph node swelling. Now, the common areas for lymph node swelling involves just below the chin here, and in the neck, the front, and the back here, sometimes in the axilla, and also in the groin. Right, so back to the slides here. Rashes in monkeypox would normally start developing up to three days after the start of the first symptoms. It could be earlier at times. Normally, it starts from the face and then it spreads down to the rest of the body, such as the torso, the hands, and also the feet. Now, the rash starts, starts off as what we call a macule, which is basically a flat lesion on the skin. It then evolves to a papule, which looks something like these which are slightly raised lesion. It then forms a vesicle which looks like a very, very small blister with clear fluid in it. It would then form a pustule. So you can see here, it's like fluid, fluid, fluid field, but it's a bit yellowish in color. It would then, the lesions would then resolve such as these and then scab up. Let's talk a bit about treatment. So monkeypox is a self-limiting disease. Self-limiting in in a sense where it would resolve itself without any treatment. So it takes about two to four weeks to run its course before it starts clearing out. So mainstay of treatment is supportive, such as giving medicine for the itch, the pain, or some fluids to replace the electrolytes from vomiting or diarrhea, and so on. In terms of vaccination, there is the Genios vaccine, which is also known as the Imvamune or Imvanex. Whatever the name is, it's the same thing. All right. So through observational studies, 
this vaccination is thought to be about 85% effective in preventing monkeypox. But most of these data is from Africa. So sometimes it can be a bit hard to extrapolate the data into a different region in the world and also with different demographic population. But apparently, the UK, as I said earlier, has purchased over 20,000 doses of these vaccinations to be offered to close contacts to potentially reduce the symptoms and the severity of illnesses. When it comes to using antivirals, there are two options for treatment that we can use here, two potential options, Brisindovovir and also Tecovirimat. So, these antivirals were initially licensed for treatment of smallpox in case of a bioterrorism event. Now, the theory here in using these antivirals is because smallpox and monkeypox come from the same family of virus. So these viruses, antiviruses would hopefully be somewhat helpful in treating monkeypox even though neither of these drugs have been studied in any human efficacy trials. There is a paper published in the Lancet Journal of Infectious Diseases just recently on the 24th of May describing the management of seven cases of monkeypox that was in the UK between 2018 and 2020, 2021. Now, I will not dive into the technicalities of the paper, but the key takeaways for the public to know is that all of these seven patients made full recovery. Now, it's really important to note that these patients were young, all right? All of them were below the age of 50. I think there was one pediatric patient which was less than two years of age. And also, they did not have significant medical issues. So these are young and healthy patients. Now, three of these patients were treated with the antiviral brincidofovir, but all three of them actually developed some issues with the liver enzymes leading to early cessation of the therapy. One patient was actually treated with tecovirimet for about two weeks and he doesn't seem to have any um, side effects or any significant side effects from the medication. The paper then concluded that you know, more studies have to be done to further understand the effectiveness of these antivirals to treat monkeypox. Basically, they're trying to say that what they're trying to say here is there is insufficient information out there to explain the effectiveness of these antivirals in treating monkeypox and we need to do further studies to try and figure out what's more effective. Now, some closing thoughts here. It's very, very hard to determine the nature of cause of the uh, monkeypox because there is still a lot of uncertainty out there and a lot of questions that has yet to be answered. The purpose of my video here today is to educate you guys based on the evidence and facts which I have found online. Now, lots of information are going to be released on a day-to-day -day basis and evidence will be changing from a day-to-day -to, -day to a week-to-week -week basis. It's really important that you guys to fact-check these evidence or fact-check these claims before making any assumptions. Just a disclaimer here, I'm not an infectious disease expert, nor have I actually seen a real case of monkeypox in my career, or have I actually managed a case of monkeypox. But the information that I have been giving you here today is backed up by evidence, and I'll post those links down below for you guys to have a quick read to educate yourselves. Now, if you guys felt that this video is really helpful for you, please leave a like so that the video can actually reach out to more audience and to help educate the rest of the public out there. If you like what I do, please support me by giving me a subscribe. If not, enjoy your day, stay safe and peace out.